Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to the next episode of Django by Example. In this episode, we're going to create a new model that represents a category uh, in our database, and then we're going to look at how to use foreign keys to link categories and items. So essentially what our goal is, uh, is we're going to be able to categorize these items in our database. So if you take a look at our homepage, some of these things are programming languages like Java, Python, and C++, and some of them are IDEs like Eclipse and PyCharm. And we could add even more. We could add famous programmers to here. We could add, I don't know, computers if we wanted to. There's lots of different things that we could do. And we want to be able to keep things nice and organized. So in order to accomplish that, we're going to have a category model, and we're going to define a couple of different categories. And then for each category, we can link a bunch of different models or a bunch of different items to it. This video is going to be kind of long and maybe a little bit confusing, so definitely make sure to pay attention. The first thing we're going to do is actually create the model itself. We're going to create the item called, we're going to create a class called category, and it is of course going to inherit from models.model, exactly like we did before. And model or category is only going to need one thing, the name of the category. This is going to be a char field, which again is just like some text and we'll set the max length to be 32. So essentially, again, we have category, which represents a category of items in our database. And it has one thing, one uh, piece of data, which is name, and name is just some text. And we'll go ahead and implement the string method, uh, which will return self.name. So basically, if we want a string representation of a category, it's just whatever the name of it is. Very simple. Uh, what we'll do is we'll actually get this into the admin and add some categories and then we're going to talk about how to link items to categories. So uh, let's go ahead and do tools and we need to run a manage.py task. Hopefully you remember this from the video when we made the item model, but every time you make or modify a model, you need to call make migrations. You can see it created a model called category and then you need to call migrate and that will actually apply the migration. So now the database has been updated, a new table called category has been created, and we can now store categories in our database. The last step that we need to do is go to the admin and actually register it. So admin.site.register and category, because that's what we called it. And we just need to import category from models. So I just added that import right there. So that is pretty much all we need to set it up. We created the model and we registered it, so we can now go to the admin page. Oops, the server is, uh, oh, it's not running. Let's make it run. And there we go. So you can now see uh, categories shows up. Let's quickly fix the pluralization because that doesn't look very good. Uh, to do this, you need to define a class called meta, meta, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, inside of the model. And you just need to define verbose underscore name underscore plural. So we'll set it equal to categories. I wish I could spell. So uh, we just have this class called meta inside of this class. And verbose name plural is equal to categories. And that fixes that issue. So it now has the proper pluralization. Not a huge issue, but I think we kind of want to make it look nice. So let's go ahead and add two categories. We're going to add a category called Programming Languages, and we're going to add a category called IDEs. So there are now two categories, Programming Languages and IDEs. Now we're going to need a way to link specific items to specific categories, and the way that we do that is by a foreign key. A foreign key basically sets up a relationship from one uh, row in a database to another. Or another way of thinking about it is one instance of a model to another instance of another model. Or it could be the same model. Well, let's take a look at how to do that. We're going to add a uh, category, which is going to be another value for item. And we're going to use models.foreignKey. And we need to specify what the key is for. And in this case, it's for category. So we're creating a new piece of data. We already had name and description, but we're creating a new piece of data called category. And category 
is going to be equal to models.foreign key. So it's going to be a foreign key to category. It's basically going to be a reference to a category somewhere. Okay, that's really all it takes there. So of course, since we modified a uh, database, when, since we modified a model, we need to do make migrations and migrate. So we'll go ahead and do uh, run manage.py task, and we need to call make migrations. But it doesn't quite go through perfectly this time because it says uh, you're trying to add a new field called category, but there's no default value because what happens is we already have these five items. And if we're trying to add a new piece of data, in this case category, we need to give all of these items a category to begin with. So we'll just go nice and, and easy and we'll set them all to be category with ID zero. Um, and then we can, you know, change them manually. Again, this only applies to items that already exist. So these five items, but if I add a new item, it will have nothing to do with what we're doing here. So don't be confused by that. So let's provide a default for now. Um, and I think we need to import uh, the thing. Uh, we need to import the model. So from PDB underscore app, import category. No, it's not. Okay, so maybe we don't need to. Uh, it should just be category.objects.get id equals 1. Name category is not defined. Um, maybe you just put one in there. And then let's try migrate. Okay, so that was actually a lot simpler than I thought. So basically, we need to give some sort of value for the items that already exist. So in this case, we're just going to set them to be one for uh, whatever, I guess in that case, it would be programming languages. Um, and so you can see we added a new field called category to the item uh, model, and then we call migrate, and it successfully applied that migration. So uh, if I go to look at a particular item, you'll now see that there is a section called category. And if I look at this, it's a drop-down menu that displays all of the uh, category values. Again, it's a foreign key, so it references another um, model. Again, we have these two categories here, so those are the two options. Now, all we need to do here is go to Eclipse uh, and change this to be IDEs, hit save, and then go to PyCharm and change that to be IDEs and hit save. So now, each of these items has a category associated with it, and if I were to add a new item, I would pick a category that I want to associate with it. So uh, let's go back to the home page and let's make it so that when I go to Java, for example, it will tell me uh, what category it's in. So it'll actually say programming languages. Or if I click on Eclipse, it will say IDEs. Uh, so to do this, uh, we'll go to the item right here. And if the item is not none, so if it does indeed exist, uh, right under the name, we'll do maybe an H4 so it's a little smaller. We just need to say item.category. Because once again, we made category, which is uh, a value. And so this will reference another category. So we could do item.category to get the category of the item. And then we can do dot name. So item.category will give us the category. And once we have it, we can get the name of that category by using dot name. And if I refresh, you'll see it says programming languages. If I click on Eclipse, you'll see it says IDEs. Python programming languages, of course, so on and so forth. So it's very, very simple to see how um, you can get a get from from that side. Basically, uh, if you have a an item, you can get the category associated with it. Very simple. Uh, but there's actually a reverse relationship. So if every uh, if every item has a category then every category must have a list of items that goes along with it. And indeed, Python auto, excuse me, Django automatically sets up this reverse relationship for you. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like in actual, like, in Django, so you can see it with the, you know, completion and all of that. 
uh, if we go, what we're going to do is we're going to, or we're going to be modifying the index so that instead of getting all of the items, we're going to get all of the categories. And then for each category, we're going to list all of the items that belong to it. So uh, just to show you really quick, uh, if we do, let's just grab a category. Um, uh, let's just grab like that. So you'll notice that something is already is defined for us, something called item underscore set. And item underscore set is a query set, or basically like a list sort of, of all of the items uh, that correspond to that category. So in this example, we get the category whose ID is one, which is programming languages. And when we use item set, that gives us all of the items uh, for that particular category. And just like before, uh, with item and objects at all, we can get the item set and we do dot all to get all of the items associated with that category. So essentially what our plan is, is to loop through all of the categories, and then for each category, we're going to loop through all of the items that belong to that category, and that will allow us to organize this index page so that it looks a little bit nicer. So how are we going to do that? Instead of passing all of the items, we instead want to pass all of the categories. So categories is equal to category.objects.all. So we're going to get all of the categories. Then let's comment this out. Uh, you can do command slash or for commenting or basically anything with a curly brace and a pound sign will be considered a comment by Django and it will be ignored. But we want to do for category in categories, just like uh, what we had with items, but it's a different context variable this time. And for each category, we want to print out the name of the category, which we defined here. And then we want to loop through all of the items associated with it. So we're going to use a nested for loop. For item in, and given a category, we can get its item set, which is all of the items that are associated with it. And then we just type dot all. You don't need to type parentheses, and in fact, it'll give you an error if you do. But uh, you just type dot all, and it will automatically call that method for you. And then inside of here, we want to bring back uh, this line right here. So let's just look at this for a second before we see what, uh, what it actually looks like. So for each category in uh, all of the categories in the database, we want to display the category title. And then for each item in that category, for each item that is marked for that category, we want to put a link to it. This is really the key part. We basically say we have a category. We use the reverse relationship to get all of the items that belong to that category. And then we say dot all to get all of them. And so we can use a for loop with this. And we just put a link to each one. I'm going to put a line break after the for loop just to keep everything separate. And let's see what it looks like. There it is. Very nice. So essentially, you can see it says programming languages, then Java, Python, C++, IDEs, Eclipse, PyCharm. So it looks a lot nicer now uh, because basically everything is organized by category instead of just having a ton of links all in one place. And of course, if I change, I'll show you really quickly, uh, if we go back to the admin page, if I change one of these items, so let's say that I make C++ an IDE. Obviously, that's not true. But if I change it, you'll notice that it drops over here. It's no longer in the programming languages section. It's now in the IDEs section because I marked that it's an IDE. And so the reverse relationship says everything marked with an IDE would include C++. I'm going to change it back because, of course, it belongs as a programming language. Um, and if I refresh, you'll notice it goes back where it was before. Oops. OK. So that's pretty much it for this video. We learned how to use a foreign key to define a relationship between two different models. And then we also learned both relationship sides. We learned how if you're given an item, you can get the programming language, or sorry, if you're given an item, you can get the category that is related to it. Or if you're given a category, you can get a you can get all of the items that are marked with that category. 
we have now achieved uh, what we set out to do in the beginning. We've built the exact same website pretty much that I showed off in the introduction episode. Of course, there's so much more to Django than just this, and the series will continue. There's other stuff that we want to look at. Uh, some things include uh, how to use static files so that we can actually add some styles to this website and make it look a little bit nicer than just plain HTML. We can take a look at media for image uploads. So basically, you could associate an image which e with each of these items and have it show up on your page. We can look at how to use users because Django has awesome support built in for user accounts. We can learn how to deal with that. We can learn about many-to-many -many fields. So for example, uh, a user could have the ability to favorite all of the, uh, the, their favorite programming languages and IDEs and other items. And they could see a personalized list of their top favorite things. There's all kinds of different things. And then eventually we'll actually talk about how to deploy this on a website so that you could show it to other people and actually make it live on the internet for anyone to see. So I hope you've enjoyed everything up to this point. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to do with this website. I have a lot of ideas, but I'm always looking for more. And if you like this video, click the like button. I'll see you guys soon with some more Django. Bye for now.